Hey y'all, welcome to Restless Chipotle Kitchen. Today, we are going to make a breakfast dish that my kids say is my superpower. Big, fluffy, southern buttermilk waffles. They are so good, they are so easy, and I'm gonna give you a trick for making sure that yours are just as light and fluffy as mine. So this is what we need to make the absolute lightest, fluffiest, most amazing southern buttermilk waffles in the entire known universe, I promise. Um, All-purpose flour or cake flour, I use a mixture of both. There's one cup of cake flour and one cup of all-purpose flour in here. Um, three large eggs, and the reason that they're in the water is um, you need them to be room temperature, and mine were cold, and I didn't want to have to wait for them to warm up, so I put them in hot water, and they'll be fine when they're, we're ready to go. Uh, if you can think ahead far enough, keep in mind that it's easier to separate the yolks from the whites um, if they're cold. And so the best thing to do is to separate the yolks from the whites when they're cold and then let them sit at room temperature for 30 minutes until they warm up. But I hardly ever do that, so there's that. And we have warm buttermilk, not hot, just uh, warmed up, a little past room temperature, about like maybe um, the temperature of hot chocolate that you would give to your child, okay? Unless you give your child very hot chocolate, but it's, you know, you can stick your finger in there, it's kind of comfortably warm. Melted butter, baking soda, baking powder, salt, sugar, and I think that's it. So, this is what we need. So the first thing that we're gonna do is move everything out of the way that I'm not going to need. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and put the salt and the sugar. Did I say sugar before? That's what it was, sugar. It was a tablespoon because I like mine slightly sweet. You can leave it out if you want to. Uh, the baking powder and the baking soda. That'll just save time later because they're all going to the same place. Give that a little mix. Make sure it's all mixed up good. So I know somebody is gonna ask why cake flour, why all-purpose flour? It just kind of depends on the texture you like in your waffles. Um, cake flour will make a very tender, uh, very soft, light waffle. All-purpose flour will make a slightly more crunchy crust. So by putting it half-half, um, I think that I get a better waffle all around that's tender on the inside with a crispy crust on the outside. That's what I think, and if I'm wrong, don't tell me because I'll be sad. All right, so we're gonna move this buttermilk out of the way, and I'm gonna take the eggs out of the bowl. So one of the secrets of really light and fluffy waffles is taking the time to um, separate the eggs and beat the egg whites stiff. And in the recipe, it does not call for cream tartar, but I'm gonna put just a little bit in, just a little pinch. Maybe two pinches. Uh, another thing that you can do to help make sure that the egg whites beat up nicely is to rinse your bowl and your beater in white vinegar or cider vinegar. That will take out any remaining um, fat that might be on it. Sometimes even after it's washed, there it just, all of the fat doesn't come off. So um, by rinsing the beater and the bowl in vinegar, white vinegar or cider vinegar, whatever you have, then that just takes the rest of the fat off any remaining molecules, I guess, and um, it helps it beat up faster and bigger and fluffier. You do, and you don't taste it. There's, you know, you you rinse it off and make sure that you pour all of it out. All right. So I'm going to. That's 
get the egg white here. Get all of it. And I'm doing it in a separate um, thing because I don't want to chance one of them breaking and getting fat in it. So there's our first egg white. Get, whoop. Now I don't know if I can get that all the way out. Let's see. I did, I did it. Yay. That's a win. Second egg white. And, oops. Third egg white. This is the one that I usually break and have to start all over with. Uh, see, I said it and it happened. Look at that. I'll give that one to the dogs and uh, be careful about jinxing yourself. Okay, let's try this again. This one's cold, but can't be helped. All right. There we go, third egg white. Okay, now we are gonna use the egg yolks, but uh, we're not gonna use them yet. So I'm gonna set those back, put the egg white in here where you can see it. And then beat it until stiff peaks form. definitely need to spend the money and get one of the smaller mixers so that uh, I can mix up smaller amounts of stuff. I, probably good to have one of each. You know, my mom used to have a mixer that was from the late 1940s and it had two separate bowls, a big one and a littler one, so that it, you know, could do that. I don't know why KitchenAid doesn't, or maybe they do and I just don't know about it. Uh, we've got stiff peaks. Um, the egg whites are fluffy and you can turn them over and they won't go anywhere. And that's a sign that we've beat them just enough. You don't want to beat them too much so that they get dry. You just want them to be light and fluffy and like you should be able to turn them over without having them fall off right away. So that's just about perfect. So we'll set these aside because we're not ready for them yet. Meanwhile, I have my waffle maker and I've sprayed the inside with a, uh, a non-stick cooking spray so that they don't stick. You can also brush it with butter uh, or bacon fat. I find that the cooking spray works the best. Butter has a tendency to burn on the on the waffle maker while while it's waiting for the waffles so but whatever you want it to be preheated okay so plug your waffle maker in before you get started all right so now all we have to do is add our two cups of flour that we've mixed the um, baking soda baking powder salt and sugar in We're going to set that aside. There's a lot of setting aside around here. We're going to take the egg yolks and beat them up with a fork. Here, I want to make sure that this is out of the way so you all can see. We're going to just beat those right up with a fork. They don't have to, you know, be fluffy or light yellow or anything. We just want them to be well mixed. And to that, I'm going to add the melted butter, which has cooled. You don't want to add it hot or you're going to have scrambled eggs. And just mix that in there. This is a third a cup of melted butter. Um, 
let me just say this real quick, which uh, if you know me at all, you know it's not going to be real quick, but um, butter, there's a difference in butter. The European butters have less water than American butters. So if you're following a recipe and the blogger or recipe creator used a European butter, you might have a different um, result than they did because American butter has a higher water content and a lower fat content. Very, that's just because of the way that the cows are raised and the way that the butter is churned and a lot of other things that are technical and I probably don't know the whole story. But if a blogger or the recipe, if you're reading a recipe and it says, you know, use European butter like Plugra or uh, Kerrygold or, you know, it, even a, like a European style butter, be sure to do that or you could get a very different result. These are slightly crispier on the outside when you use a European butter. Um, I use Kerrygold a lot. So keep that in mind. All right, so we've got that. And one thing I forgot to measure out and tell y'all about, I always put a little vanilla in mine. Maybe a fourth a teaspoon, maybe half a teaspoon. Maybe whatever happens to come out of the bottle. So it's not that deep, however much. I know, I drive people nuts with that because I know a lot of people who've done like bread recipes get very upset because <clears throat> I'm not exact with the amounts of yeast and that's a whole different story. But if it matters, I'll tell you it matters. How about that? All right, we're going to take our egg yolk, butter, and vanilla and pour it into the warm but not hot, oops, the warm but not hot uh, buttermilk and stir that around. If I ever do a professional cooking show, which y'all know this is about as professional as I get. Um, they're going to tell me to be more prepared. I know they will. Okay. Now we're going to mix that up and probably make a mess. And then, well, let me wipe that mess up. Then we're going to take our egg mixture and pour it right into the dry ingredients, just like that. We'll mix that up. You can mix it up with a whisk or a spoon or whatever. It doesn't really matter. You just want it to get uh, mixed up really well so that you don't have a lot of dry streaks. Now, the batter is going to be very lumpy and that's okay, but you don't want a lot of this dry white thing. See how there's dry flour in there? You don't want to see a lot of that. Maybe a little bit, but not a lot. Okay, Let's make sure that's up off the bottom and just fold it in. So. That's what your batter is going to look like. Very lumpy and I guess kind of cottage cheesy. Not very pretty anyway. Now what we're going to do is we're going to fold in the egg whites and that's what's going to make it fluffy. The way that you fold in egg whites to anything is you take about a third of them and you fold that third in very gently first before you add any more. And the folding is an over and under kind of thing. It is actually like you were folding clothes or folding a sheet over and under. You bring the bottom over the middle. And you keep doing that until you've got your um, egg whites mixed in, this first batch of egg whites. What that does is it lightens the batter up so that when we put the rest of the egg whites in, they don't deflate. And that's what you want to guard against. Over mixing will deflate your egg whites. And by putting the first uh, little bit in first, 
then it helps them to be able to be mixed in without being deflated. All right, now we're gonna put the rest of them in. Once you get the batter all mixed up together, you um, don't wanna let it set. You wanna use it immediately. It will start to lose its fluffy ability if you wait too long. So this isn't one of those batters that you can make ahead of time and set in the refrigerator or whatever. You wanna make it and use it. And just fold those egg whites in nice and lightly. And this time, we want to get them all folded in, but we don't want to overwork it. So it's kind of a balancing act, but it's not like they're going to be totally messed up if you, you know, overdo it a little bit. Okay. Now, as you can see, the batter is much lighter and much fluffier than it was, which is what we wanted. That's what the egg whites do. We get all of that off of there. So most waffle makers have the power light and then the light that says ready. You want that green light to be on before you get started. Okay, both lights are on. I'm gonna turn this to the side so that you can see maybe a little bit better. Now, I sprayed this with the Pam spray. It maybe sat a little bit too long and it did get kind of a dark color in there. That's not gonna hurt anything. So if that happens to you with your butter or whatever, it's fine, just go ahead and use it. And I scoop it out in the middle, and I put about a third of a cup on. You, different waffle makers will take different amounts, actually maybe more of a half a cup. Different waffle makers will require different amounts, but you put it like that, put it right in there, and close it, and then mine turns over, and it, that helps it get fluffy. So um, if that's what yours does, then do it that way. Do whatever your waffle maker tells you to do. And then you're just gonna wait until it stops steaming. Meanwhile, I've got the oven on warm in the back. And what you're gonna wanna do is, once your waffle is ready, you're gonna take it right out of the waffle maker with your fork and put it on the rack of the oven with nothing underneath it. And that way it will stay crispy. If you have like a, um, a cooling rack or something that you wanna lay over your oven racks if you don't feel like they're that clean, then um, you know do that, whatever you need to do. But try to make sure that the air can flow around the waffle all the way, okay? So I don't know if you can see, I think you can, that it's steaming right now. That is what it's going to do, and it's not going to be done until it stops. Okay, it's just about stopped steaming, so I'm going to turn it over. And there we have, a little bit small, but there we've got a pretty fluffy waffle. Very thick, very fluffy. I'm going to put this one in the uh, oven and then I'm going to start another one, but we want it to be nice and hot. It usually takes me a couple of tries to figure out how much batter I need to put in the waffle maker. So that was like about half a cup. I'm going to try about three fourths of a cup this time and we'll see. But your waffle maker may be different. This is an Oster, um, I think it's a Belgian waffle maker maybe. And my husband got it for me several years ago. I don't even know if they still make them, but, um, Yours may be different, and so you're gonna to have to adjust the amount of batter you put in your waffle baker accordingly. Okay, it's nice and hot. A little bit more. I have a feeling I put too much in that time, but we'll see. Sometimes if you put too much in, it'll squish off out the bottom. All right. And there we go. All right, it's just about stopped steaming. Let's take a look. I did better that time, still not quite enough. 
I don't know. Who wants perfect waffles anyway, right? So you can see, who it's hot. The outside, I wish y'all could feel this. I wish we had touch TV. Um, the outside is really crisp and the inside is really tender. Let me see if I can show you this. Do you see that? See how tender and fluffy it is on the inside and how crisp it is on the outside? I am not sad that I broke that open. That means I get to eat it. I'm gonna let that warm up for a bit and we'll do another one. Wow, that's really good. Um, <clears throat> what I find is by the time I do the last waffle, it's perfect. So maybe you'll find that too. All right, so here's another one. And I'm gonna put a little bit more on there. it and turn it over and we'll see you in a few minutes all right I think we're about ready let's take a look ah see near perfect and there we go so I'm just gonna keep doing that until the um, until the batter is all gone and then uh, we'll take a look okay y'all this is so good they are so thick, they are so light and fluffy, and the outsides mm, have just a crisp, thin, crisp crust. They are delicious. So, I hope you'll try them. They're perfect for chicken waffles or breakfast waffles, breakfast on Christmas morning, breakfast on New Year's morning, New Year's Day, breakfast, Sunday breakfast, um, breakfast for dinner, whatever you want to do with them, they are delicious. They're big, they're fat, they're fluffy, fluffy inside, crispy outside, so good. I'm going to show you one more time what those insides look like, okay? Look at that. So fluffy. Mmm. So I'm going to take my plate of waffles. I'm going to go put some butter and syrup on them, and I am having breakfast for dinner tonight. I hope you all will subscribe. I hope y'all come back next week. I love y'all. Bye-bye.